Julie Etchingham joins many of us in our living rooms at 10 o'clock each evening. As co-presenter of ITV News at 10, she keeps us informed about what's going on around the world in a relaxed and accessible style perfected by years of hard work over her varied career in television. Julie was born in Leicester. Her parents were both teachers and provided a stimulating home environment well suited to Julie's powerful developing intellect. They always made sure she had lots of books and she became fascinated with reading from a very tender age. She recalls so well a case of mighty tomes at the head of the stairs, which first taunted her as she developed her reading skills and then rewarded her as she was finally able to get to grips with their glorious mysteries. She attended the English Martyrs School in the city, where her interest in literature was nurtured further by a charismatic English teacher. So she has always known that words would be her life. An ardent diarist, Julie also became interested in the comings and goings of the world from a tender age. Addicted to news round on the TV, she collected endless scrapbooks of newspaper cuttings and began to dream of the day that she would present the news to the world. At the age of 15, her mother gave her the yellow pages and suggested she sought out some experience in journalism. Entirely under her own steam, Julie talked her way into work experience at Radio Leicester. Just running errands and making tea helped her understand how the environment worked and has proved invaluable as her career has progressed. Inevitably, it seems, Julie gained a place to read English at Newnham College, Cambridge. Anxious to develop her self-reliance, however, she deferred a year and went off on her own to work as a teacher in Germany. She returned confident to enjoy her studies guided by exceptional tutors, some very famous, and to participate fully in university life. Julie believes firmly that successful people have practical plans to run alongside their study, so made sure to write for the college magazine and eventually presented a student radio programme on BBC Radio Cambridge. When the time came to apply for a BBC News trainee programme, success was assured. She started her career in the West Midlands, soon becoming a reporter on Midlands Today, and cut her journalistic teeth through the hard slog of interviews on windy street corners and noisy car factories. She learned how to be disciplined and organised and how to relate to and talk with people of all kinds so she could catch and present a story in an engaging manner. When she was just 24, she got her dream job as a presenter on Newsround, the very programme which had inspired her as a child. She beat many others to get the prize, and for three years she developed new skills of communicating with young people whilst travelling the world, engaging in all sorts of exotic activities. It was here that she met her future husband, Nick, a Leicester graduate, and they are celebrating their 15th wedding anniversary this very day. Her career at the BBC progressed as she presented the breakfast news and the holiday programme before, in 2002, she moved to Sky News, where she presented a number of programmes, including Sky News Today. In 2007, Julie moved to her present role as co-presenter of ITV News at 10, where she remains to this day. Now firmly in the senior ranks of trusted presenters, she has co-hosted coverage of many major events, including the Royal Wedding last year, and most recently, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. It takes a very special person and a great deal of preparation to look and sound so relaxed and convincing in the mayhem of a TV news studio. But Julie certainly has it. Julie thrives on the adrenaline of the newsroom. Ready to jump on a plane at a moment's notice, she travels the world to report on the most momentous events, from the inauguration of Barack Obama to the recent Japanese earthquake. She never knows where she might be next. Her talents and achievements have been recognised by the award of Presenter of the Year at the Royal Television Society Journalism Awards in 2010. Julie's story is one of great ability matched by determination 
and single-mindedness. She has shown that if you know clearly what you want to do and set about doing it systematically, all is possible. Now, at the peak of her career, there is surely much more to come, and we all look forward with great anticipation to her scaling new heights of television greatness. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of Senate and Council, I present to you Julie Ann Etchingham, that you may confer upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. you to the degree of Doctor of Laws. Welcome you among us. Many congratulations. Thank you. Goodness, I've got to live up to all that now. Thank you very much indeed. Vice Chancellor Professor Burgess, Professor Peterson, Ladies and gentlemen, fellows of the university and fellow graduates, thank you very much indeed for making me so welcome today. It's such a huge honour to be here among you all on such a special occasion for so many people and to receive an honorary degree from such a great university. When the envelope arrived from the Vice-Chancellor uh, just a few months ago, though, it initially caused a little bit of consternation in our household, I have to admit. My husband, Nick, went slightly pale. He thought that it was from the sociology department chasing him for the 12 essays he's owed them since 1985. <laughs> Happy anniversary, dear. <laughs> so you can imagine my delight and his relief when we opened the envelope. Leicester University and this city is a place close to both of our hearts. Nick, as I mentioned, spent his formative years here as a student, specialising in the study of football hooliganism and rigging student elections. Um, while I was swatting for my O-levels, and yes, I'm of that generation, uh, down at English Martyr School, just a couple of miles away from here. Uh, very recently, I was invited to the university by Professor Coles to come to speak to the History Lab, which was a lovely afternoon, and again, I got the most uh, a warm welcome here at the university. So this wonderful city where I was born and where I grew up, I still think of as home. And it's quite simply where my roots are. And just as many of you will be doing today, this very special occasion is a good moment for us all to acknowledge our roots. It's a chance to thank my parents who are here, who taught me the value of hard work not least by their own example, as they dedicated their professional lives to the children who were their pupils in Leicester schools. And as you get older, your roots become more important to you, I think. I learnt my trade as a journalist here in Leicester, and the skills I developed here on its streets, such as they are, the skills, not the streets, are still ones that I use today. After a few weeks of making the tea at Radio Leicester, they let me out with a tape recorder onto the streets to do little interviews for some of the presenters and reporters there. They're known as Vox Pops, I'm sure, as many of you will know, just to get people's views on the topics of the day. Invariably, I'd be greeted with, hey up, me duck. You're a bit young to be out here, aren't you? But people took the time to talk, as they always do in Leicester, and I absolutely loved it. One of the great honours of this job is simply to listen to people's stories and then dignify them by telling those story, stories fairly and well. And one of the most important aspects of this job for those who might be contemplating it, and people come to this job from all sorts of disciplines, is not simply to give voice to the supposedly great and the good, but to give voice to those who otherwise might not be heard. And I learnt that lesson here in Leicester. I also learned at my City Comprehensive that whatever your background, if you're canny and prepared to work with initiative, you will get to where you want to be. And I know many of you will be contemplating the jobs market and what might lay ahead in the coming months. Don't take no for an answer and always say yes to an opportunity, even if 
you think you can't quite live up to it. It happens to me most days of my working life. And take the knocks when they come, because they will, and make something positive out of them. So as you all take your next steps in whatever careers might lie ahead for you, I wish you all the very best. It's a great honour to be sharing this day with you. And as a small example of how high you might aim, I'm going to quote to you my son Leo, who is here with his little brother James today. And it's lovely to see them with my mum and dad. Uh, I'm going to quote you Leo, who at the age of six announced that he would like to be a judge. And I thought, gosh, this is all looking rather good, isn't it? What grand ambition. And I gave myself a little pat on the back. And then he said, on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> so may I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you, Professor Peterson, for your kind words today. Thank you also to Professor Gunter, who's looked after me, and for this great honor. It's a privilege to stand alongside you all and alongside especially the graduates here, who I know, like me, that wherever you go, will always carry a little bit of this very special city in your hearts. Thank you very much.